Can investing make you rich? Now, investing, if it's done long term, can not only make people rich, but actually, statistically speaking, 100% of people who have had a middle income who have managed to invest for decade after decade and decade at low cost have actually gotten rich slowly. Now, the problem is, though, if it was so simple and easy, then why isn't everybody doing it? Is it just a lack of knowledge? Is it behavioral reasons? Is it emotional reasons? But as Warren Buffett says, investing is simple but not easy. I'll give you an example, right? Let's say the, uh, the market crashes by 30% tomorrow. You know as well as I do, some people will panic even though all of the evidence says you should never panic during those periods and actually you should never market time. So what are the easiest ways to get rich investing? Now the first thing to bear in mind is time is key and also adding lump sums when you have it is key. I'll just give you one incredible example. Let's talk about two people. So person one, let's say, let's call him Brian, invests uh, $500 a month, $6,000 a year, and invests on 100,000 lump sum for 30 years. Person two, let's say Steve, is also investing $6,000 a year, so 500 a month, also has a $100,000 lump sum, but invests for 40 years instead of 30 years, so invests for 10 years longer. The person who has invested for 10 years longer would actually make about a million dollars extra even after inflation. Think about that for a second. A million dollars just for investing 10 years longer. And also, if you actually play around with the compound interest calculator that I put below, you can also see how adding a lump sum makes a huge difference at the beginning. And that is, if you compare two scenarios, let's say person one, is investing the same amount as person two, they both get the same returns, but person one adds the lump sum at the beginning, that makes a huge difference, and I'll tell you why it does. Let's say an amount like $100,000, right? You take it when markets have performed on average about 10%. Now granted, that's just an average, right? Some years they're performing at 20%, 30%, minus 20%, but just if you look at any kind of long-term average, Obviously, it compounds quicker on that amount of money, right? Whereas if you start your account with small amounts of money, like $1,000 a month or whatever, that's fine, it will still compound, but obviously do the maths, right? When your account's worth $5,000, $10,000, $15,000, even if markets are going crazy and performing at 25 or 30% as they did about five years ago, 25% of $10,000 is $2,500, whereas 25% of $200,000 is uh, $50,000, right? So if you add a lump sum at the beginning instead of time in markets by gradually putting in money, that makes a huge difference. I've had many people say to me, oh, you know what, Adam, I've got an inheritance or I've got a huge lump sum from work because I've been laid off, I've been made redundant. I'm thinking about putting in that money, maybe 20,000 a year or 50,000 a year, instead of putting in the whole lump sum of say 200 grand, 400 grand, 500 grand as one go. That's a huge mistake. You should never do that. And the final reason you should never do that is reinvesting dividends. So markets pay between two and 4% per year in dividends. So for every $100,000 that you have, that's an extra two to 4,000 every single year you can reinvest into markets. And then of course you get the dividend of the dividend. That's how compounding works. So I would say by starting earlier, reinvesting dividends, always investing lump sums whenever you have them, never trying to time markets, being as long-term as possible, also having some bond indexes as well as stocks. Doing those five or six things maximizes your chances of success and also lowers the risk of anything going wrong. Because of course, if you only invest for 10 years, you're always risking markets having a bad 10 years. Occasionally, it happens. It tends to happen every, say, four or five decades, markets have a bad 10 years. If you invest for, say, 30, 40, 45 years, even if you start off small, you know what, there's going to be bad years, there's going to be about 10 years, even maybe there's a chance that's going to happen, especially about five years. But overall, time is a key way to reduce risk, especially if you do it in the right way, by reinvesting those dividends. Think about it. Let's say you invest for the next 10 years, and let's say in a really bad case scenario, markets produce zero, right? And all you do is reinvest the dividends of 3 or 4% you're still making one or 2% a year above inflation, and you're making about two or 3% more than you will do in the bank, if not 4% more. And actually, 
That's a bad 10 years for markets, right? A good 10 years, you get the capital gains and the dividends. So reinvesting dividends is a really key strategy and accounts for a lot of the um, gains that investors can, um, can make. Okay, everyone, um, I hope that's useful.